I'm smartly dressed for the WWE Hall of Fame Forum, a time where Hall of Famers come into the WWE to provide something special for the company. We have Shawn Michaels, always great to see him. He's been, he's done it all, and now he's making special appearances for the WWE. Hogan, sign a contract, fans are excited, only to plug the network. Bit of a letdown. Rick Blair, another guy some fans would be excited to see, apart from me, because he retired, went to TNA a year later, did some stuff there, and now we're meant to bring him and accept him back in the WWE, only for him to make odd appearances that lead nowhere. I think not. As for the forum itself, it was basically to put John Cena over, and let me tell you for why. When these three, two or three, doubt John Cena, it gives him another opportunity to overcome the odds, like John Cena's saying he's going to do as he brings the fight to Brock Lesnar at Night of Champions in his rematch. And this match has been labelled as the biggest rematch of Cena's career, his big redemption. Hang on Cena, weren't that the same idea going into your match against The Rock? Yes, Brock Lesnar is a beast and he dropped you on your head multiple times, should have been a few more times. But The Rock was another big name who beat you at WrestleMania, did not happen to beat you at SummerSlam. But that was a redemption storyline, your big redemption that lasted a year. This one is not going to last a year because Brock Lesnar will defeat you once again at Night of Champions. Brock Lesnar's video package, not as good as his first one leading up to SummerSlam, but it was basically to say that John Cena, the end is near and it's going to happen at Night of Champions as he proves once again why he's a beast and why he is now the new champion. The main event added more to this, but I'll get to that at the end of this review. The Jack Swagger and Rusev feud has came to a close. On Raw, Rusev beat Swagger down to a point when Jack Swagger could not get up, making Rusev the winner. That feud is over, Jack Swagger was getting good cheers, he was over, but not to a point where he could even win a match over Rusev. Rusev is victorious, but don't worry, Swagger is now going to go into a feud against Bo Dallas, because after the match, Bo Dallas is saying how you got to believe and you'll come back from these losing you're going through, and how he let down his country. Later in the night, Bo Dallas defeats Kofi Kingston in a okay match, nothing special, only for Swagger to come out and attack him. So a Jack Swagger vs Bo Dallas feud, Swagger put over Rusev, Swagger to put over Bo Dallas, this is all good and all, but while Swagger is over, don't you think you possibly want to start pushing him to a point where he could become a okay part of the WWE again, but at the same time I'm going to give Swagger credit that he's using his overness to put over the newer talent. Cesaro is the number one contender to face Sheamus at Night of Champions for the United States Championship. And as much as I'm looking forward to this match, because I do watching Cesaro wrestle, he's not in the place where many fans would like to see him at. He's proven he can face the names in the WWE and put on great matches. Then he went through a losing streak and now he's back in the mid-card, chasing a mid-card championship. I feel so much more can be brought out of Cesaro, but it's being delayed or it's not happening. I'm not sure what's going through the WWE's mind when it comes to Cesaro. But at the same time, I don't know what went through the WWE's mind when they brought Rob Van Dam back. When you bring back Rob Van Dam, you expect all these high flying risky spots, but he's coming back only to really lose matches and not really claim his return as a big deal in my opinion. This is why I've not really enjoyed Bob Van Damme's return. But 
at least we've got the, a match set up for United Champions, a good match in that factor, and the right person win this match. Following Paige defeating Natalia, a diva who should never have been dropped this low, especially when she's put on great matches on NXT, we have a segment between Paige and AJ. AJ, who must have been lazy and forgot to put on her wrestling gear because she came out in her pajamas. And it gets a bit creepy, AJ side, as she hugs and kisses Paige's hand to say they're still best friends. So this didn't really tease what could be happening at Night of Champions, but I'm hoping to see a submission match or a possible hair versus hair match as they teased last week but I feel these two divas could and can put on a different match a special match for the viewers than just another singles match against each other let's hope the WWE agrees because I think that would be something good for this feud the moment of silence we shared with the Ambrose ceremony quickly turned into a Rollins celebration. He put himself over so greatly here, saying how he took out and destroyed Ambrose, but it's the WWE Universe's fault for what happened to him. While Kane just stood in the corner to applaud Seth Rollins for what he's doing. I'm sure many fans were applauding Seth Rollins. Because even though he was the heel, he proved that he can do things on his own. But with all this going on, and us not ever seeing Ambrose again after what Seth Rollins did to him, we're wondering where does Rollins go from here? And out comes Roman Reigns. My quick thought in my mind was, is Roman Reigns the right opponent to replace Ambrose for now? Because Roman Reigns just defeated Orton at SummerSlam. I would have used that the opportunity for Triple H to step in. And say Orton didn't get the job done. So I'm going to have to take out Roman Reigns myself. To set up a feud from there. But I guess you don't really want to push the Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins feud. Too far into the future. Where it doesn't seem to matter as much than now so it's two-sided but Roman Reigns comes out and it almost looks like the WWE were going to give Seth Rollins another big moment by having him uh, put down Roman Reigns onto the concrete bricks again but no the WWE was not going to allow that and had Roman Reigns come out looking strong and as much as complimenting Rollins for his mic time in the uh, celebration or the Ambrose ceremony. Backstage he's complaining. He's whining. He's complaining. And I'm just like. Not every heel has to do this. Where's Rollins confidence. That he had on the mic in the ring. When he had Kane. And Kane. Offering himself as a tag team partner. For Rollins to go against Reigns. I'm sorry, as much as I am a Kane fan, Kane is not much of a tag team partner anymore. His monster ship has gone. He's shriveling up and disappearing. I'm surprised when he surrendered his mask that he came back. Because in this match, I don't know why two competitors can't be in the ring at the same time to beat up Roman Reigns. They have to do it via tagging. But it went down a bit different than expected. At least Seth Rollins did not get pinned. Kane could have. But either way, Seth Rollins uses the briefcase onto Reigns. And then Reigns takes them out because they weren't going to have uh, Roman Reigns get beaten up. Okay, we're pushing Roman Reigns too far too fast. There's nothing wrong with him having... A, a few big bumps having him lose matches to single competitors who's the concentration on in this feud is it Rollins or Reigns <sighs> the backstage segments between Goldust and Stardust you would think these two brothers were being portrayed as a face but when it comes to the match against the Usos the Usos happen to get themselves counted out which turns 
the Rhodes Brothers, Gold Stars, heel as they attack on the Usos when they didn't get their rematch. So is this going to be stretched over to Night of Champions? So you have in the Rhodes Brothers as heels and the Usos as the face. The thing I want to say is we were all wanting the Usos to become the tag team champions. They deserve it. Without good competition, without the various matches, match types, this championship reign hasn't been the best, not been exciting. I'm ready for the championship to change hands. Do I want it to be passed to the gold stars? Or the Ascension when they come in. To the Wyatt family. There are other tag teams I probably wouldn't mind seeing as the tag team champions. But the main thing is. We need more of a mixture in the tag team division. To make the feuds and future matches interesting. But I'll give the WWE compliment for making this be a surprise factor. That came out of nowhere. But it gave us another heel tag team. I'm trying to see the positives in this, people, even though I feel that you could have kept them as a face and brought in the Ascension or finally gave the Wyatt family the Tag Team Championships. Okay, let's make this quick. Ziggler defeats Miz's stunt double, Damien Mizdow. Oh my freaking gosh, I'm just going to give up hoping that the WWE stop with this Damien Sandow stuff. But the main concentration is going to be on Ziggler defending his Intercontinental Championship against the Miz at Night of Champions where Ziggler should retain because there's no point dropping the championship so quickly back to the Miz even though I did say I want to see Miz versus Bad News Barrett later down the line. I'm not sure how much talking the better twins do on Total Ds but on Raw I think Stephanie McMahon should play a strong, solid part in their feud to save the segment for whenever it goes bad. But saying that, I give Nikki credit for the way she held the mic through this promo. No, she actually did. Did you see a grip? Brilliant. Because the segment went on and on and on. It's all about how uh, Bree's been holding Nikki back. The funny part is it went as far back as being in the mum's womb. But it's all about forgiveness. Brie forgives Nikki for what happened at SummerSlam. Nikki will never forgive Brie. Yada, yada, yada. I don't care. Face each other at Night of Champions. Have Brie pick up the win and finish there. If you are going to continue it, bring back Steph. Steph is the one who made this feud happen in the first place. She's the one who made this feud work in the first place. Now you've left these two on their own, it's not working. The last Matadores defeated Slater Gator. How does an alligator sound like... <coughs> Even though at SummerSlam Brock Lesnar beat John Cena down so bad he was injured and hurt, he had to stumble outside the ring and become the WWE World Heroic Champion. What did he actually do? Because on Raw, in the main event, Super Cena's back, he's ready for Brock Lesnar, he beats down Bray Wyatt to a point where the Wyatt family had to get involved, which made Bray Wyatt and the Wyatt family versus John Cena, Big Show and Mark Henry. And where, what happened? John Cena overcame that match as well and defeated the Wyatt family. This John Cena thing is getting stupid now. The whole opening and main event was just to prove that John Cena is Super Cena again. Nothing's changed. Brock Lesnar didn't really do much to John Cena or put John Cena down in any way. This is getting really stupid. It's the same old Cena. It was a chance, an opportunity to see a different side to John Cena following SummerSlam or at SummerSlam, but no, it's the same old rubbish, and now you wonder why I don't like John Cena. Well, the WWE continue to prove many, many times why I don't. Yes, I think that John Cena should have a fighting chance or prove that he's got some fight in against Brock Lesnar, but not after what happened at uh, SummerSlam. Well, people, before I go on a John Cena rant, oh, I miss those days when I used to rant on that mother... 
please leave your comments in the comment section below thank you again for watching i'm wearing a suit i'm gonna take it off until next time goodbye